Uh, my name's uh, Elixir Elliot. My name's James Hewitt. And we're here at a very special show. Um, what's the name of the show? The show is called Imaginary Friends. And where are we located? We are located at Samara Contemporary, which is the curated space at the back of Birch Contemporary on Tecumseh Street in Toronto. So there was a bit of brainstorming that happened as far as entitling the show. Uh, and originally I wanted to call it World Famous, which is based off a song by the Beat Nuts, which is a rap group from the 90s out of uh, Corona, Queens. And they had a song called World Famous on their, I believe it was their first album, which I really liked. And uh, both of us met in a... <clears throat> sort of a hip hop related scenario, so that's something that definitely ties us together. Once I, thought, once I thought of World Famous, I thought of the lyrics, and there's one part of that song that says, uh, you lazy snuffleupagus. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, maybe I could call the show Lazy Snuffleupaguses. That would have worked so well. And I went a little oh, bit, man. I took one step further, and I researched snuffleupagus. <laughs> Snuffleupagus was a popular character on Sesame Street yeah. until he wasn't and he was cancelled. Snuffleupagus was cancelled because he was possibly an imaginary friend which related to children being abused and channeling their trauma through imaginary friends. So Snuffleupagus became very controversial and was therefore taken out of the show. So instead of calling it Lazy Snuffleupaguses, I decided to call it Imaginary Friends, which is, again, a very loaded term, but I think that the show captures all the spectrums of that term. Uh, in the description, we talk about Imaginary Friends as trauma, Imaginary Friends as invented friendships by people who idolize other people, celebrities, for example, and Imaginary Friends are also they also act as a coping mechanism for people who are just bored and full of imagination. No, yeah, <laughs> we were brainstorming and it all sort of, when I think of imaginary friends, I think of um, like on a surface level, um, uh, Drop That Fred, remember Drop That Fred back in the day? <laughs> that was the best when everyone's meeting in the, the doctor's waiting room and I guess that's how I feel. Uh, everyone has an imaginary friend in that way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, sometimes uh, when I work in the studio, I talk to myself, I sing, I dance around, you know? Um, uh, in, in that, like, back and forth, um, you could sort of have like a, a conversation. Having a conversation with another artist can get like your idea or your concept out, you know, a bit smoother. Um, but in the same sense, when you're having these conversations with yourself in the studio, it's kind of the same thing. Once you hear yourself say it, um, you could uh, create it in a way, you know? So um, I kind of think Imaginary Friends is kind of like tacked to that too. Like we all still have them, even if we had them when we were kids, we all still have them in different ways, you know, so. My interpretation of uh, being an artist and having an imaginary friend would be the fact that the way that I make my art and a lot of the content, subject matter and in intention comes out through the art versus me verbalizing these things. So if it's something controversial, I'll demonstrate it in the piece instead of actually stepping on a soapbox and yelling it to the world. So it's not an imaginary friend, but it is an imaginary voice that then is given light when the pieces are complete. The abstraction does uh, play into the idea of imaginary friends. Um, I guess when we were younger and when we played by ourselves in that literal sense, they were always there, you know? Um, as we grow, they tend to like fade away and they're not as strong in your life. 
and sometimes that's how actual friends are, you know? So it's a way to um, rationalize it or, you know, figure it out in your head. I think the imaginary friend is also defined as just that, something that stems from the imagination, which then becomes limitless. And I would say that art, mark making, especially with uh, the example of Jabari's work, gives you a limitless, or it gives you an opportunity to create something limitless, and therefore giving the faces and figures multi-directions. There are multiple ways to interpret them, and there are multiple ideas being presented at the same time. So it's abstraction, but it's also a playfulness that allows for the viewer to have their imagination exercised as well and stimulated. Thanks, Thanks James. <laughs> <laughs>